how can I improve a kid's life? Uh, but more than just like two, like watching that I'm yeah. watching every week. Um, and of course, that didn't that idea didn't come to mind until I started CrossFit. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Full Send Podcast. It's Coach Brandon over here. I'm alongside Coach Monroe, Coach Bailey, a podcast brought to you guys by Verity Speed and Strength. Guys, hey. What's up? Hello. Bailey, welcome to the show. You know, I've been waiting a long time for this. Yeah. One of, one of the most uh, avid subscribers in the beginning. Uh, let's see here. Member turned coach, now running the kids program. Bailey, t- tell us a little bit about you, girl. Um, You know... I'm 22. I'm a young, a young woman, and I'm just here to have some fun. I coach the kids and the teens. You coach adults. And the and adults, adults, too, and man. Adults. A lot of the adults. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so don't. one thing that really stuck out to me about Bailey, especially when she first came to the gym, um, you know, I had – you guys were transplants from Ashburn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you showed up, Bailey was like – I want to do kids. I want to start a teens program. This is what I want to do. I'm super passionate about this. And I was like, wow, that's most people are just like, well, I just want to get a, you know, I just want to trade a free membership and whatever. Right. Um, but I thought it was really unique that she was like, she was not really interested at the time in coaching adults. Um, and I didn't really have a teens program at that time. And so it's been great, you know, watching you develop from, just doing the teens starting out to being able to, you know, also take on the adults. And I think, mm. you know, I think you do great. So, yeah, Thanks. Bailey. So going, going back in time, how, I don't even know. And, you know, Bailey and I have been friends here for a while now mm. and we've talked a lot about CrossFit. I'm not sure I actually know your story about how you found CrossFit and you actually yeah. came into this, you know, methodology and mm-hmm. program. Why don't you share with us uh, what that experience was like? So mine is like yours. Because okay. you watched the documentary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I have played soccer my whole life. And then, like, there was an end to it because I was going to cosmetology school in Utah. So I was, like, watching, watching the documentary one day because I put it on while I was literally packing for Utah. And I was like, oh, man, this looks really cool. Like, like these people are insane. Like, obviously, <laughs> like, I couldn't do what they could do. I remember, like, watching the documentary being like, I could probably be as good as them, really? which is like so laughable. <laughs> Thinking back to that, where I'm just like, oh man, I got just You're as like, much yeah, heart as they do. I, can like, do that. I think I can do that. Yeah. And, no. Uh, no. Co- do you remember yeah. which documentary it was? It had to be 2015. I yes, that's that's but the they one took that it I went to too. I'm pretty sure. I'll they that they rotate really? them. Yeah, I'm they sure rotate they do, them. Yeah. So, they're, but they're on other applications. Mm-hmm. Uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. you can rent them for. 2014's on YouTube for free, which you can watch and watch Rich and oh, Matt. Go ahead and Ted. Fort? Yeah, that was the it first one. It was an one. early one that I watched. I'm 2015 sure. was like the first official one that was released. 2014, they like they kind of mm-hmm. did, but it wasn't like on a platform where you actually maybe had, it like, was 2015. It wasn't. Though. It wasn't distributed mm-hmm. on anything else other than YouTube. And the 2014 mm-hmm. one is actually kind of free and everything like that. Okay, so you watched the documentary. Yep. When did you take action and we're like, okay, I'm gonna go do this thing. So, I didn't really want to put anything onto my plate right at the time because it was like the end of the summer and I was leaving to Utah. So it was like not worth it to like look Were at gyms in the here area at that time yeah okay so i was i was just like in the area and i was like leaving probably in like a month so i reached out to gyms of course and like wanted to try all these crossfit gyms out there and so the first one that i tried no wait the second one that i tried is the one that i ended up staying at um and it was like 10 minutes away from where i went to hair school and i went every morning before school at five like you, five were, five you were an am Yeah, because I had to be because I had school from, what was it, 8 to 6.30 p.m. And I, I wasn't going to go to the gym after a long day of school. Yeah. So, yeah, I was a 5.30 am I think that's one of the toughest things people struggle with at time mm-hmm. is just setting aside time, especially yeah. when they have a busy day where they're going to school full-time or they're going to school and working full-time or working full-time and being a part-time event planner like mm-hmm. myself. Uh, coming in here at nine is even, you know, it can be a struggle at times at like five. That, yeah. That's, that's some serious dedication at heart. Mm-hmm. Cool. Gains. All right. So you went to, uh, you went to the gym. What was your first, uh, reaction like when you, when you got into it? Um, there was one girl in specific who I remember seeing and I was just like, how can she do all these things? <laughs> like it was crazy. She could lift the weights. She could get on the bar and do all these like tricks and stuff. And I was just like, yeah. 
it looks so far in in the in the long run for me and i was just like oh maybe one day and i just like how do you how do you compare to who you were watching back then wait what so like 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 when i think about when i first started right i Mm -hmm. could snatch maybe 95 pounds Mm -hmm. at that time but then there were guys in the first gym that i went to there were some serious fit guys there right so i mean there's guys you know pulling monroe millers and snatching 255 or higher and I remember thinking, like, I'm never going to be able to snatch, like, 100, like 135 pounds is a yeah. big deal because that's, the, you know, the two donuts kind of on the board. I mean, so now, like, looking back, are you, know, are you equal to that girl who you kind of saw? Are you the same? Or is there some yeah. stuff you do better? Yeah, I think um, I, I even sometimes, like, catch myself, like, like oh, what would she do? Like, She's a scrub. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you want to 1v1 me, bro? Things that I could do. Because <laughs> she, she ended up getting like pregnant and all this stuff. So they yeah. can't do the same thing. So I was like, right. maybe we're like at that same place now. And it's, it's just crazy because I, I do remember like, like walking into the gym and seeing people like that and being so intimidated, but at the same time, so inspired by those people, you know? Uh, go, go ahead. No, that's, that's a fine line where. You know, there's definitely an intimidation factor with, yeah. you know, especially with CrossFit um, and with being an outsider in a in a realm where you're walking in and people already know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I think it's impressive. I think that'd be a really good thing for anybody, anybody in the gym right now, right? Because like for me, if I count the number of times that I want to work out here at Verity Beast Speed and Strength, like it's on one hand, it's not very often. That's because we have so many fit boys in the gym, and that's and that's great. But if I think about like where I'm at today versus you know 2016 Brandon, it's like, dude, Leaps that's a world of difference. I should we should start to like institute that like once a week, like on Fridays, where oh, I'm just like, cool. all right, time to time to sit back and reflect and, and go on that. Um, well, awesome. So, how did you become so passionate about you know starting a kids program? I mean, have, have you always enjoyed working with kids? Yeah. So. I pretty much nannied like my whole life. Like I was probably 13 when bless, I first started like babysitting and stuff. And you know, it was just like little stuff every now and then. Um, and then I, in high school, I think it was my, it was my junior year. I started like nannying and doing something like a little bit more full time. And then took nannying jobs here and there. And I just like, I was like, Oh, I love kids. Like, I just want to, I want to do something with them. And like, like, how can I, how can I improve a kid's life but more than just like two like watching that I'm watching every week um and of course that didn't that idea didn't come to mind until I started CrossFit and and not even when I started CrossFit like two years after starting CrossFit because at the time when I first started CrossFit obviously a coach wasn't something that I had planned you know yeah so yeah I don't think any of us started with the idea of coaching and then I did. Really? Yeah. Really? Um, Yeah, I did. That was like uh, my whole journey of I want to do something I really love. I don't care about like how much money I make or anything. And so I really wanted to go into personal training. So the first gym I actually went to before I joined them, I actually went to them and I was like, what do I have to do to like, like help you guys out? And I like literally talked to them. I was like, I'll clean out a storage facility. I was like, I don't care where I start. And the the young woman who ran the front desk, she like looked at me like I was an alien and was like, <laughs> have any experience? And I was like, no, but like, but like I'm here and I'm ready. Um, I think that is rather typical though, as most people yeah. don't come into this thing being like, all right, I'm going to cut, you know, I think that's more normal than me being a crazy ass in the yeah. beginning. So. <laughs> um, all right. So I, I want to get into, I want to get into a little bit about maybe how we grew up in the current state of just like just fitness related to youth in 2021 um monroe growing up man what what did you do when you were i don't know 10 11 12 years old uh to pass time by yeah so i was homeschooled growing up so was uh, i really was till sixth grade whoa. yeah so was whoa, i guys. whoa we're like whoa. the same and we <laughs> sing oh and everything this <laughs> is crazy um <laughs> Yeah, so I was homeschooled until sixth grade. Um, I wow, lived in the same I lived in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, you know, I was homeschooled then, and I played with some neighborhood kids. You know, we used to kick the balls around and do that kind of stuff, ride scooters. Um, I'd do a lot of walking with my family. My dad used to take us into Boston every weekend. Um, my mom was a visiting nurse, so she schooled us during the weeks, and then my dad kind of took us to Boston on the weekends. Um, when I moved here, I started middle school. Um, I did wrestling in sixth grade and hated it. 
and then uh, it wasn't until high school that I started playing lacrosse. So that was kind of my, uh, you know, that was my experience with sports. Yeah, man. So your situation growing up was very similar to mine. Um, I lived in the neighborhood. I was really blessed with this. There was like 10, 10 kids, all like my brother and I. My brother and I are about 18 months apart. You're Michigan? Michigan, yeah. yep, growing up. And uh, we were all the same age. And so we would go out and get into all sorts of shenanigans. Uh, you know, we built a dock kind of on a river. And there's all sorts of stories of like, you know, falling out of trees, getting hooked with fishing <laughs> lines. Um, and then we were also really active. And it didn't matter if you participated in like, you know, the school sports or, you know, rec ball or travel ball. But, I mean, we did that stuff all the way up until I left that neighborhood until I was 16 years old. And uh, spring, summer, it was basketball and baseball. In the fall, it was football. And then in the winter, we played ice hockey uh, on the ponds and everything. And I was re- it, like, that's a really cool thing to be a part of. I don't, I don't know how much of that happens today. And this is pure guessing just because, like, I don't have a child. I'm not watching them go through any of this stuff. But, like, back when you and I were growing up, um, there were no, there were no cell phones. That was a very new thing. Like kind of going into middle school, texting became a thing from what I can remember my junior year of high school when I was 17 or 16 years old. And so I'm, I'm just curious what like activity levels and if that differs or anything like that, Bailey kind of growing up for you. Cause you are seven, eight years younger than mm-hmm. we are. Um, did you have an experience similar to what we had? Was technology more profound? Do you wish you would have been more active kind of growing up? Walk us through that a little bit. So I feel like I was pretty active. Like cell phones, we would text. I think starting in middle school is when that happened. But also that's when stuff like um, like we were getting exposed to like Facebook and stuff. So we would chat mostly through Messenger. I don't know, for a while. Yeah. And you then didn't have AIM? Do you, know, do you know I, what that is? No, I do. <laughs> I, there was some sort of thing that we chatted through, though. It, I don't think it was AIM. Oh, wh- no, I don't remember. I what, thought I what was your name. What was your AIM name? Oh, uh, I don't remember. No, Cross my parents like, wouldn't let me on it. No, mine wouldn't either. No, oh, my I gosh. Think, I think I like, sneaked on it. My family was like kind of religious, so... They were, yeah. uh, yeah, they they weren't a fan of that. You also had dial-up internet. Do, do you have any memory yep, of that at all, Bailey? Yeah, I don't think so. Don't worry about it. It's it <laughs> super slow, and it, it made awful. stuff a lot, lot more mm. difficult. Well, the reason that we bring all this stuff up is, you know, one in five kids, uh, 2021, currently right now, are obese and everything like that, uh, which just leads to a lot, a lot of health troubles. Um, you know, that could be when they're a child, or it could develop into other stuff when they, when they grow up. And so, you know, like, how does how does CrossFit and making exercise a, a staple? of a kid's life help with uh, development. Uh, Monroe, you want to take this one first? I mean, I think I think it's incredible. I've seen what CrossFit has done in my life, and it's, you know, one thing that we hear from almost everybody that does this is they're like, man, I wish I would have started swimming, you know? Mm-hmm. I wish I would have known about this 10 years ago. I wish I would have known yeah. about this in high school, you know? Exactly. And, you know, I feel the same way. I When I was in high school sports, I didn't enjoy conditioning. I didn't enjoy the actual activity part. I liked the game of it of like playing the cross or whatever. But as soon as it was like, this is work, I was, I was not about it. Um, and I think that takes some time to develop, but I also have noticed that I think overall people have a, like a better grip on health and fitness today. And I think that kids, while I think obesity is rising just like with adults, but I think there's more exposure for kids to, activity at least at least in this area and from my perspective being a parent like you know I'm thinking about what what sports am I going to put my kids in like you know how am I going to get them active and I'm you know I'm going to bring my kids to do CrossFit kids here but um yeah I mean when I was growing up I, I don't remember health and working out being such a big deal you know and now it's like it's kind of like oh what gym do you go to you know where do you work out um but those numbers are still going up, which is interesting. So, I I mean, I do agree. I think that, you know, the number of kids that want to stay home and play Fortnite is 20 times what it was in my, my age, you know? And like when I was growing up, the Nintendo 64 was just coming out and I would like, of course, (laughs) of course, (laughs) but I would like, like, you know, it was like my parents wouldn't let me have video games. And so I would walk like, half a mile to my friend's house to go play N64 and yeah. then walk half a mile home. You know, yeah. now it's like with the internet, you know, it's like kids just don't have to go anywhere to play with their friends and, yeah. you know, and it, it, as a parent, like 
it kind of, you know, we're busy and everything else, but, you know, we gave Harper an iPad, like, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and now she's, like, she can figure it out, she plays games on it, she watches it, like, you know, and I'm kind of aware of it as, like, I need to make sure that that is something that is limited, or at least that the activity is a piece of it, you know, so... Yeah, and there's not to say there's anything wrong with video games or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I still do that. Sure. I'm almost 30 years old, and it's a great social aspect for me and my friends to meet up, and we're all over the country now. For sure. And it's really great for that. Uh, this is a great supplement, though, uh, to, to be able to get somebody to come in and not only like move and stuff like that, but also get to work with a, with a professional as well, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, the other thing about kids and obesity, and like I said, it's, it's kind of trending with the adults, and I think that... You know, kids are watching what their parents are doing. Mm -hmm. If their parents are working out and they're active and they're healthy, like, the kids are going to more likely be active and healthy. Um, you know, both my kids have been raised in a CrossFit gym, and so they're very active. All as your far daughter as, like, does is run. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and and son, climb. Right? <laughs> and your son is, like, crawling maniac all over yeah, the place. As soon as you figure you like, it out. the same, like, head bob stuff? Like, yeah. Weird. They're going to be fit girls. Future um, game fit girls, excuse me, fit, fit kids. Um, Bailey, so what's it What's it like, like a you know, day in the life experience, just uh, somebody new or somebody existing just coming into one of, your, one of your classes? What do they get to experience? Like a teen? Yeah, sure. Let's take it from that okay. one. Okay. Um, so from the teens that I've worked with, a lot of them haven't worked out before, which is actually the opposite of what I thought would happen. I thought I'd get more athletes who would want – more of an opportunity to progress themselves. Like sports specific yep, training type yep. stuff. And I've seen the opposite. I've seen kids who've never worked out in their lives and it's pretty much their parents wanting th them to get involved in something. Um, but pretty much we just like, I try to focus on one skill work and one weightlifting piece a week. So each day we're hitting something because we only have two classes right now, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and then we'll end with some sort of workout. And it's just something, it's just something fun. It's not going to be something that's going to destroy them unless they want that <laughs> because we can up the intensity. But usually for, like, the people who are just walking in, like, I just want to show them a fun time, like, get to know the people in the class and – it's really cool because the people in class now are like really good friends yeah. and they're all like having a good time, like having all this banter, you know, on the side. So it's cool. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, the same thing, I think that, I think that's great. You, you know, fitness, friends and fun. That's the same thing that I talk about with you guys, with the adults, you know, that's, yeah. mm -hmm. that's what it should be. And that's what, that's what working out should be, you know, and to, to give that to kids at a young age, I think they get the fun piece early, mm -hmm. you know, and then the fitness and the friends come with it. You know, so I think that keeping it fun is, is super important. And you mm -hmm. can still teach people stuff while you're having a good time. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely can. Uh, so I guess the next segment that I want to kind of go over is there's, there's typical criticism you'll get to CrossFit or, like, expectations that get made, you know, both with the adults and with the kids. And it was funny, you know, because I oversaw, I guess, the development of the kids' program. And, you know, I was head of, you know, just sales and getting new people over at the old gym at Ashburn CrossFit. And the, some of the questions that I would get were, you know, just kind of funny at the core and everything like that. But I want to kind of go over that just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to, let's, let's just, uh, let's start with, you know, is CrossFit going to stunt uh, a child's growth? This is like most common feedback that we get within this. No. Day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's, I think people, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm making a video about, you know, kind of what is CrossFit and why it works and what yeah. is fitness. Um, and I was explaining this to my wife a little bit last night, but I think people just don't really understand what CrossFit is and they don't really get it. And so they're like, oh, the games. I watched the fittest documentary and that's what CrossFit is. And it's like, well, yeah, but that's, that may be like the peak in the 1%, but that's not how we start, you know? And that's not what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's not what it's like walking to the gym. Yeah. And, and it's the same thing for kids, you know? They're not, just because you say, hey, I want to throw my kids into CrossFit, it doesn't mean we're going to be like, okay, one RM deadlift, let's go, you know, like max everything out. Let's push it to the limit. Like that's, that's not, that's not what we do in, in class. And that's not what we do for kids either. You know? So I think that a lot of the, is CrossFit bad for my kid is, is having your kid go run around and play rec ball or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like 
is that bad for them? No. I think I had a higher percentage chance of getting injured while I was playing recreationally than I ever did participating in a sport or lifting weights or, sure. or doing CrossFit. One of the most common like things I ever would talk about with parents is they would be like, okay, I don't want my kid to squat. Like squatting is going to stunt their growth for their legs. Like it was unbelievable how common the thing was. And I was like, well, did your, did your kid like never sit down? Did they not go yeah. to the bathroom? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, walk me through this. This doesn't, this doesn't make that much sense. Um, is lifting weights bad for kids? No, in, in moderation. Like in, and of course we're not going to give them, you know, a hundred pounds for a back squat if yeah. they're like, what, 40 pounds, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, strength development happens the same in youth, except for, I mean, it's exponentially more the younger you are, but mm -hmm. strength development happens the same way no matter, you know, whether you're an adult or a kid, you know, and when we're not, you know, you start with, mechanics and then you make sure that you're moving well you know and then the weight will come as the movement happens mm -hmm. you know and like at least what i've seen with a lot of the teens is it's it doesn't matter what you know they're squatting with the empty barbell or a pvc pipe and it's just hey are we greasing that groove are we learning the movement pattern are we staying active and having fun and that's you know they'll learn how to move and how to be efficient and how to lift weights and i've seen some videos here Mm. Teens Freaking now savages. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Dude. I watch them like it's like that's a beautiful overhead squat. Yeah. And it's like, how about that? Yeah, it's incredible. So, Bailey, can can a child incorporate you know CrossFit just into their their everyday life, or maybe can it supplement a sport or do something like that? Yeah, yeah. So I, on the rare occasions where I do have athletes that do something else, I've seen, like in my little brother, for example, he does the cross. And while they only have like two practices a week or whatever, I saw when he was coming pretty regularly, like I saw in his performance and the way he talked about CrossFit that it was helping him a ton in his speed, in his, you know, balance, coordination, all that stuff. Like he thought that, and not to like, praise him or like that he was being cocky or whatever <laughs> but he was saying that he thought he was in much better shape than all these other kids because they didn't get all these benefits from weightlifting and you know this extra skill work that we do um I totally think it can be supplemented with a sport and I think it's very helpful if it is especially if you are in high school maybe looking to go to college somewhere for a sport you know um and it's in everyday life. Like you said, like everyone squats to the toilet. <laughs> everyone is like sitting at dinner and has to get up, you know, like everyone has to deadlift to pick something up off the floor. So like, if you can learn a good foundation young, like you're going to be set for a while. Yeah. Um, that I wish I would have had something like that mm -hmm. growing up. I was, I was a runner. I was a really skinny kid, but like at the end of every single 5k is pretty much a 30 second all out sprint that's going to be you know more phosphogenic related to metabolic systems than you know staying in the oxidative state and uh well doing heavy squats and working on sprinting work and strength related development really would have helped with that or even just working different metabolic rates would have been incredibly useful even just coming you know here a couple of times a week yeah Monroe, what do you think i mean crossfit works like the methodology works um and yeah like she said improving all aspects of your fitness will help your lacrosse game. It'll help your soccer game. You know, help everything. You know, people are like, it's not. You know, if, if someone's playing soccer and they come to CrossFit, it's not like, okay, well, because you're a soccer player, you're going to be doing footwork drills. Like, it's not going to help you like that. But you know, your overall stability, your body awareness, you know, your everything mm -hmm. will will improve when you improve your fitness. And that's just that's just because the way that CrossFit training works, it just works. So. How many times a week would you suggest somebody come in and do, and do CrossFit? If they're supplementing it, probably just twice a week um, for a teen. But if they're wanting to do this and just this, I think it'd be great if they wanted to come like four times a week. Um, when I took the kids' course this past weekend, they said, like, little kids, it's good for them like twice a week, and then adults can go up to like four times a week. It just depends on what they're doing outside of this. Um, not that it's super intense when you come in because, you know, everyone gets their own prescribed weight. Um, but, you know, it's a CrossFit workout. So one, one of the really cool things that I've also seen, you know, with the teens that we have and their development 
is just the confidence, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that's also something where when you talk about going into, you know, your brother going into a sport, like just having the confidence and knowing like, man, I do CrossFit. <laughs> like yeah. none of the rest of these people do. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen it with Michael too. Like, oh, you know, yeah. they just like, when he first came in, it's like, kind of like hoodie on, like hey, don't guys. talk to anyone, you know, and now he walks in and he's like, hey, what's how you up, doing? Y'all? Hey, what's going on? You know, yeah. it's just like, you know, they, you know, you mm-hmm. start feeling mm-hmm. fitter, you look better, you start losing weight, you know, and that happens for little kids too. You know, it's the mm-hmm. same, it's the same process with adults that it is with kids. Yeah. If somebody wants to join, how do they go about joining? Where can they find you guys? I have my social media platform. It is private, so not on there. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find me on Facebook or just um, Bailey at Verity.training is my email. Yeah, shoot Bailey an email. We're um, So we currently do teens, but you just did the, the kids class, right? Yep. So we're starting yep. um, with little kids. What ages is that? That's three to six and then six to 12. So the six range is kind of like depending on how young they are or how close they are to being seven. Um, but three to six is just like, we're just playing games. It's like literally a 20 minute class, um, playing games, showing them like thumbs to shoulders. Okay, now feet under your thumbs. Like, like just very visual stuff. You include some Superman, superheroes, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be like great supplement to like adult <sighs> coaching cues anyway. I, I know. And they, and they actually, teach you to like do yeah, that in some aspects. It is really helpful. And it just really simplifies mm-hmm, cues mm-hmm. when you're like, okay, you need more hip extension. You're like, yep. what the hell does that yeah. mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. What What was your experience like with your with your kids, sir? Um, so since COVID, it now is on Zoom, which usually yeah. it's in person. Um, so it was a two-day course. It was, was it six hours a day, six hours, something like that. Um, and we just had two guys talking to us about the whole, the whole spiel of kids and stuff. Um, how to run a class, how to kind of like control, you know, the little kids, but also like how, how do we make this super, super fun? And how do we keep their attention at all times? Because, you know, like, kids are, like, all over the place. That's the that's part that's, when you were like, oh, I want... That's the toughest part I have with kids. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Yeah, when you were like, oh, I want to coach kids. I'm like, that's... <laughs> trust me, I have to, like... <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's good for kids, too. You know, like, Harper, you know, she goes to a Montessori school, and, like, we she, she, she knows that, like, because she's in school, she knows this is time to pay attention, you know? So mm-hmm. I'm excited to get her in here and... Yeah. See how she does with listening, you know, because if you just let her go crazy, she'll go crazy. But, yeah. you know, having a little bit of structure and having mm-hmm. like, hey, this is what we're all doing. You know, I think that's really important for their development, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, cool. I want to go over maybe any closing thoughts that we have uh, just related to the kids program or the teens program. And then after that, Bailey, I want to do kind of like a little speed round of questions for you so that the uh, listeners can get to know you a little bit more. Right. But uh, Minro, what you got, man? Last thoughts here just regarding uh, kids, teens, all that stuff. Start them young. You know, it's like mm-hmm. a, it's like a retirement account. The earlier you can start saving. Oh, what an analogy! You know, the better it'll, uh, yeah. that'll be over time. You know, and if, and especially if you want your kids to be involved in sports later in high school and you know all that stuff, building a solid foundation of fitness mm-hmm. is super important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally agree with that. Bailey, what you got? I also agree with that because when you start them young in a gym, they also learn habits of how to eat healthy, how to take care of themselves so when they're older. And if you can start them in that habit as young as possible, then it's going to be something that they can't live without. Right. That's For awesome. Sure. All right, guys. Cool. So when, if, you, if anybody who's watching this saw me doodling on my phone, I wasn't texting anybody back <laughs> and forth. I was actually jotting down these questions because I want, I want the listeners to get to know the coaches a little bit more when we get to bring them on here. You know, some people have been on here like Coach Pat has been on here three times. This is Bailey's first show, and we'll definitely have her back on here. Um, okay. So, Bailey, in no particular order here, mm. uh, favorite CrossFit movement? Squat snatch. Uh, least favorite CrossFit movement? Thrusters or dumbbell power cleans. What? Yeah. I freaking hate dumbbell power cleans. <laughs> dumbbell squat cleans are easily one of the worst ones for me. Uh, favorite CrossFit athlete? Uh, men and oh. women. Be careful. They might I be I got to go with my ride or die, Katrin David's daughter. Oh okay. God. And God. I've been a Dan Bailey fan since day one. That's when I saw him, when I saw him in the 2015 games, stole my heart. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Uh, favorite moment ever in your CrossFit journey? Ooh, that's hard. Oh, that's really hard. 
Whoa, I don't know if I know that one. Joining Verity. Joining Verity. No, I'm just kidding. Finishing. That's that's probably a pretty can, good one. We can come back to that yeah, one. We'll Hold that back. one in the back of your okay. head. Yeah. Uh, if there was going to be a repeat in the open for a workout this year, what workout would you want and why? Um, last year's with the cleans, pistols, and box jumps. No. Box step ups, I think it was, actually. Oh, man, that one, the clean yeah. jerks? No. Yeah. Oh, that thing was nasty. That was the first time I got pistols, so I was like, guys, look at me. Yeah, okay, it's Sandbag Saturday. <laughs> Coach Nick Derhakopian is coaching the class. <laughs> Bailey Skip. You have to choose one person to partner with you that's a guy. Who would you choose and why is it not Patrick Long? Oh, I was going to say Pat Long. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, uh, that's a guy? Yeah. Um, if, it's, if my brother's there, I'll choose him because I'm a good sister. But if he's not there, then... Go with my dude, Monroe Miller. Man, it's tough. It's I don't tough think to we've ever him. partnered up in a workout. Tough to beat him. I like it. Uh, we've thing- had partner workouts, but just us. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. The yeah. thing that you like best about Monroe Miller? Um, ooh, ooh, this one's hard. Okay, um, there's a lot. To think about. <laughs> Guys. He's, I would, I would <laughs> say... Um, my wife is going to hate this. <laughs> either how much he cares or his positivity. Oh, you're sweet. He's, he's great at both. Yeah, yeah. He's really great at both. All right, and then circling back, favorite moment ever in your CrossFit journey? Mm, oh, there there was one. Um, so I got my first strict chin up, and this was like three months after I joined. That's a big and moment. This, I was hitting PRs, or not, uh, you, know, you know, like your first PRs like in CrossFit. Like your first couple years, you're, you hit PRs yeah, a lot. Yeah. If, and you're, so, if you're coming consistently, that will happen often. Yeah, I call my dad, and I would do this every time I would like get something new or whatever, and I'd be crying my eyes out. I'm like, Dad, I got my first <laughs> trick chin up. <laughs> and he'd be like, why are you crying? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it just affects me that way. <laughs> Have you ever cried out of joy? In a moment across it, Monroe? No. No. Not what, what has been your favorite moment in your CrossFit journey? I don't think we've talked about that before. Maybe we did in episode one. 20 episodes ago. Dude, we're 20 deep. How about that? It's awesome. Whoa. Oh, man. Just one. I don't know if I can pick one. It's hard to pick one. Yeah, I don't know if I can pick one. I mean, there's been a couple workouts in the open where I've just, like, absolutely crushed it and, like, loved that. But... I think a lot of the, my my favorite moments come from watching other people succeed. Yeah. You know, watching other people get their first muscle up or, you know, conquer their fears, you know. And I mean that's that's what drives me to keep going and that's what that's why I do all this for, so. Yep. Yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to take this from two perspectives, right? There's one is like a coach and then there's one um I'll go I'll go with an athlete. The one as a coach was I worked with somebody on the nutrition uh the nutrition side of things where I won't, I won't say your name was but uh, basically, it, it enabled her to have a child or try, and awesome. um, that was a pretty cool moment because she had to get to it. She had to do some certain things to be able to make that happen. That happened. It was, it was a pretty powerful moment, That's and really cool. uh, I just remember like you know her calling me like on the phone kind of after that, going through that. That was a really powerful moment. And uh, let's see, as an athlete, the proudest I've ever been of anything that I've ever done. I don't know, probably the first time I ever snatched 200 pounds. That was, <laughs> it's interesting, because I, I think back to that time, and it was only a little over a year ago, it wasn't that long, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of work that went into that, um, a lot of work doing wrong stuff, I will also say. I, I was pretty much, I would just put myself underneath a barbell that was super heavy um, while moving bad, but I would do it a lot, so eventually I was just able to fall underneath 200 pounds and stand it up. Cool moment, mm-hmm. and then I got to spend you know the next year of my life, and even still, <laughs> Uh, stripping away all the bad techniques that I would do, and uh, I'm much more confident in the way that I move. Now I hit, I hit 200 pounds relatively consistently oh, yeah. and everything like that. Uh, all right, guys, uh, closing thoughts here. Closing thoughts. Love CrossFit. Start it young. No, no better time to start than now, you know, adults or kids. Bailey. Come try my class. You can try just one or come for the rest of your life, <laughs> and I'll watch you grow up. <laughs> Does it cost anything to come try class? No, yeah. you can just there email me for free. Awesome. Well, cool, guys. Um, for those of you who are listening, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, please you know, give us a, a like, a share. Uh, you guys can do a fi- if you guys can give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, that would be greatly appreciated as well. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Give us a like. Uh, comment below if you have any questions about kids or any of the stuff we talked about today. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Full Send Podcast, and we'll see you soon.